Hi everyone, welcome back to William Sonoma's Test Kitchen. And I've been waiting for this day for a while because I'm here with my friend Justin Chappell, who's the culinary director at Food and Wine magazine in New York. So excited to have a friend here. Hi, how I'm are you? I'm so happy to be here. It's like a dream come true. I am at William Sonoma headquarters well, in San Francisco. So cool, right? And I met him in his kitchen. I'm like, why do we ever go back and forth like this? So it's finally yeah. happening and for the best reason ever for your new book. Just Cook It. Just Cook It is my new book. It came out last week. Are you wearing a shirt that you're wearing on the cover? Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's my new book. It came out last week. Um, I am so excited to release it. Yeah. It took forever. As you know, as a yeah. cookbook author yourself, it takes forever to write a cookbook. It takes so long. And um, to finally see it go into print like this, I'm really excited. It's so Such a rush. And I'm right? so proud and happy to be partnering with William Sonoma oh. um, on a couple signings. We had a signing in New York City last week so at cool. William Sonoma Columbus Circle. And today in San Francisco, going downtown. downtown William Sonoma Union, Union Square, Square tonight, 6 30 to 8 30. So if you're in town, please come please see Please come see it. Show up and watch him cook yeah. again, right? And try some of his food. Well, I'm really excited because the recipe that we chose to make, thank you, Jen, from our social media team here. <laughs> I think that she looked at this, but it's a really cool idea for a steak with a yes. riff on a chimichurri sauce. So you want to share with us what we're going to do yeah, and why? So I mean, the story behind it's cool too. It is. It's a, and it's fun. So um, we're doing my three minute steaks uh -huh. from Just Cook It. And what's really, really fun about it is there's two really cool things in the recipe. The first one is that it cooks in three minutes and yeah. I have a really smart hack for um, cooking steak perfectly in three minutes. Um, but the other thing is a really fun riff on a classic chimichurri sauce, right. um, which is a green salsa basically. Yeah. Um, and But I make it with carrot. Which is so cool. I get made fun of because I put green sauce on everything that I make. Yeah. And so the fact you're says carrots, now I can go home and do something a little different. So, <laughs> Um, um, so okay, let's get so started. So to get this started on the steaks. Yeah, let's do the steaks. So, oh, and it should be noted, we're not only going to make steak right now from my book, uh -huh. but Amanda and I went to the farmer's market here oh, right. in San Francisco, and we picked up a whole bunch of fresh fruit and Amazing stuff that's fruits. really seasonal, and we're going to make a salad with it. Cool. So we're going to get started because this is a fast recipe. Yeah, and uh, so three minutes. I've never cooked yeah. a steak in three minutes in my life unless it was like a piece of skirt steak that was this thin. Right. right. So what's your trick here? So the story behind this is, you know, you go to France, and when you go to France, you don't get these huge hunkin' steaks that no. you get in the United States. Right. So and I fell in love with just eating these really thin pieces yeah. of meat. But the trick is, I like a medium rare steak, mm -hmm. and I want to get it really crusty on the outside, but I also want it to be nice and like rare, evenly cooked. Rare, juicy, yeah. juicy on the so inside. So I'm starting with these half inch thick New York strip steaks, right. um, which are gonna cook really quick. Okay. But the trick I have for um, getting them better, like get them browning better in a faster. shorter amount of time, faster, yeah. there you go, thank you. <laughs> Two of us together <laughs> can figure it out. Right? Is I actually just dust them in a. Oh my gosh, I forgot to season them. Okay, let's oh, season them okay. with salt and pepper. Here's, here's uh, you have the pepper, I've got the salt. So yes. we're gonna season them first. And what's. Or second. What's so. <laughs> whatever, first or second. Both sides, one side. Depends on which steak you're looking at. <laughs> um, and the, the great thing about what just happened is, as you know, when you're cooking, um, it shouldn't be intimidating, it shouldn't be stressful. Don't worry if you make mistakes, it's right. fine. And that's one of the things that um, I talk about in my book is, like the slogan that I have for my book is, yeah. it's only food, so just cook it. It's it's such a great slogan, yeah. and I laugh because I always say, hey, we're not, you know, it's not rocket science, it's not surgery. I met a surgeon the other yeah. night, and I was like, yeah, your job is actually stressful. <laughs> Ours, we're just cooking. And it's true. Like, it's just, um, you learn how to master a couple of techniques, Justin, and you figure it out, right? Yeah, and that's what you do. And once you learn one thing, you'll, and you master it, you'll, You'll use it over and over and over again, and then it'll evolve, and mm -hmm. um, you'll use it in more and more recipes. Well, and you're just kind of the master of all of these cool hacks and ways to save time and simplify cooking. If you guys haven't been on Food & Wine site, you, probably, you guys are probably on YouTube as well, aren't yes, you? Yes, we're on YouTube. We're His all hacks over. are incredible, and so they're really fun, and you're known for them. And so this one in particular, I was like, cornstarch on my steak? I've never thought <laughs> Well, a lot this. of people do like flour. Right, it's and no I different do cornstarch than, yeah. for a stir fry. Like, I put it on smaller cuts of meat, so why yeah. have I never thought to do so it So what, what the cornstarch is doing here, uh -huh. do you want to add, I think our, our pan is hot, right? Okay. Yeah, you want so to our beautiful um, lodge oh. skillet here, which I for oh my god we, we forgot, forgot to mention. <laughs> oh my god! You guys, please for 
first of all, feel free to ask us questions as we cook, but they can win this, which I'm so excited about. They can win the pan and Yeah, the so we just... have it here. I'm going to show it. I know I'm going to put it back for you. Check this out. <laughs> you got the book, Just Cook It. We're giving it away, and we're also giving away this really beautiful lodge cast iron pan. I mean, is it, a, are we calling it a skillet, grill pan? Yeah, you, you know, there's like a grill and a griddle. I it's call a griddle. this the griddle, but I love doing steaks on this because you, like you're doing, instead of having the ridges, you're going to get all of the crust. Yeah, and so really quick, I want to show yep. you a fun trick for okay. knowing if your pan is hot. All right. So we're getting a little bit of water. This has been heating. Sizzle, sizzle. And so if you add a little water to it and it kind of bounces around, Let's then you know your pan is hot. Let's do it again. Just get a close up. Get a close up. You can see the beads. And if Woo! they dance around like that, then you know they're ready. I love because it. what's really crazy is the, wa the, the pan is so hot that the water's actually bouncing on the surface. That's crazy. Um, so you just put a little oil and get it oil. nice and, nice and um, coated. Don't you like having an assistant? <laughs> <laughs> and then just spread it around a little yep. bit. Oof. Thank you. This is actually what I really love about this griddle mm -hmm. is the, the one I have at home is the is the tube the, the one yes. that goes with the two burners. Right. But this is nice because it's I smaller. think it's super practical actually. So let's add these here. These are yep. gonna literally cook really quickly. Okay. And you're Do just you gonna to leave us? it. <laughs> just gonna leave it. Oh, we, I probably need a little more oil there. But okay. It'll be just for crusty, crispy. Yeah, you want let's crusty. just make it a little bit. And then when we flip them, we'll make sure that they get a little bit more. Yeah, because what's that, what's gonna happen is you're you want that cornstarch to kind of. It's absorbing any of the moisture that's between the skillet and the steak. Uh -huh. um, normally, I would I think the recipe. So it's funny because right before we went live, I was joking how I don't remember the exact yeah. recipe. Yeah, it <laughs> even happens. though it's my recipe, but right. when you write 145 recipes, yeah. you oftentimes forget some of them. <laughs> so I think it's better than being a singer and being on stage and forgetting the lyrics. Yeah, like I feel like we could kind of make our way through this. <laughs> I don't know. We could fake it. So. Normally, I would add two tablespoons of oil to the pan. Okay. I forgot. Okay, and I was, great. I was telling you just to add a little bit. So the, the, now we're gonna do the fun riff on a chimichurri. All right. Do you need to put me to work? Um, do you want to start mixing this other stuff? Absolutely. So why don't you tell people what's in here? So okay. we have some parsley, it yep. looks like. And then we have what do we have? <laughs> like, so I'm we so have so like, we have finely chopped up? parsley, and we have the the greens to the carrots. You know the, what's funny is carrots. that I was questioning myself, and I was like, these look like carrot tops, but that's they fun. are. That's awesome. So you have here your carrot tops. You know, you buy your carrots, and you, these come attached yep. only. Of course, you have flat leaf parsley, right. but the, those carrot greens are actually really, really flavorful. Wow, gorgeous! And they have um, they're a little bitter. Yeah. So I like to cut them with some of the parsley. Okay. But basically, you're adding some of the carrot greens All right. to make your chimichurri and you're adding some of the parsley. I love this idea. But then also what I'm doing is I'm taking carrots and I cut them into thin strips or like long, um, I've, I've sliced them lengthwise into quarters or eighths or whatever. Right. And now I'm cutting them crosswise into really little pieces. And what you're getting are these pretty little triangles. I don't know if you can see these. They're really, really pretty. Oh, cool. They're like carrot flecks. Love it. Or whatever you want to call them. Do you have um, an order in which you put all of this in, or do you care? No. Oh. Like, I can start doing this for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have our so carrot greens, we have parsley, you're putting fresh lemon juice. Garlic. There's some finely grated garlic. Oh, garlic. Gar grated, I'm kind of obsessed with. They make fun of me here because I never grate my garlic, and a yeah. chef came in and did it, and I'm like, why don't I do that more often? Because you just get mixes up so much better, you know? So it's like you get that subtle flavor throughout instead of these chunks of garlic that are kind of... In yeah. your face, right? And you don't have to, one of the things, one of, in my opinion, one of my pet peeves is when you cut garlic on a cutting board and then the, you, whole, the whole thing, thing is garlicky. Yeah. Forever. Like, and then you go cut a piece of fruit a week yeah. later and it still smells like garlic. But what I do to like kind of fix that, believe yeah. it or not, and you might want to, if you're going to use this trick at home, you're going to, you want to read, I think, the instructions about the board you, you're yes. using. But what I do is I put some salt on it. I get it wet. I put some salt on it and then I... Scrub it with a half of a lemon. It totally works. That's yeah. funny, I learned that in cooking school because we had wood counters and did you ever have to do that, Jen? No, no um, at the cooking school I went to at Tom Marie's, um, we'd have to scrub it with salt and lemon and it totally works. And I think I'm supposed to put a little oh you like I think I need I think it needs a little more, but I think oh. we need a little more. Was that a set, was that disappointment? Because I was a little really good. Yeah. What were you looking for? I'm looking for all the oh here you can see. I'm gonna turn this so yeah. you want to get close up here. And can you repeat what kind of steak it is? Carrie wants to know. So this is a New York strip steak. Can you see me through the smoke? <laughs> can people see me through the smoke? Um, so look at these little really, really brown edges here. Yeah, that's, that's from the cornstarch. Wow. 
So yeah, yeah a little, just, I mean, am I going to lower the heat of the pan so much if I put a little more go. down no. there for you? We just don't want to start a fire with the oil. No, too. we don't. <laughs> um, but really, you've heard of minute steaks, so I was like, let's do a fun, red fun minute steaks and do three minute steaks. That's fun. Because really, it takes a little more than a minute. So exactly. I think, our, I think there's olive oil in this also, right? Do you know what I love? I really do love that you're like, yeah, I already put the olive oil in. Oh, okay. So, so get a close up on this beautiful sauce. So you wants to know what is a chimichurri? Oh, good a, question. A chimichurri is like, it's it's basically, so every culture, in my opinion, across the globe has like their version of like a salsa verde. Agreed. And chimichurri is a version of a salsa verde. Yeah. So in this case, in order for it to be a salsa verde, I mean, or a chimichurri, I think it needs green in it, which yeah. is why I use the parsley and the, the um, carrot green. Right. The carrot tops, but I also wanted to incorporate some of the carrots because they're really so pretty and colorful. Right, and like a traditional chimichurri mm -hmm. from Argentina, a lot of times it's parsley, but you can use mint, you can use basil, you can mm -hmm. use thyme. And so, um, but adding color and carrot to this, I think is really fun. So, I mean, I don't know how long that these were on because, I, oh yeah. Yeah, sorry. I sorry, red, crushed red pepper. Okay. Um, I don't know how long these have been cooked, but one of the tricks that I like to do is I like yeah. to cook it just a little bit longer on one side before you flip it, because then you're, you ensure that one side is going to be like really, really, really crust. Yeah. You know what's funny? I don't think about that with steak. I always think about it with fish, too. Like, because you can see it cooking or chicken, and you can see how it's well done. it's cooking, and then you... But Christine wants to know, is what? it three minutes on each side or three minutes total? No, what I do is I do two minutes on the first side, um, because then you're getting that extra, oh yeah, sorry. No, so you can actually do your So you're getting that extra, the little bit of extra time on the one side so it gets really crusty. It's kind of hard to see. I wonder if, you can't hear it because, but you it kind of. You can hear the crust. Yeah, it has like a really nice crust on the outside. Wow. Um, and then when you flip it, it's like one, it really depends on the temperature, but if you flip it, I would do like another minute on the other side, which gives you your three minutes. So okay. two minutes on one side, one minute on the other. That's for medium rare. If you want to cook it a little bit more, yeah. which I think I did by accident, because we're talking and we're, we're live, then <laughs> still gonna be you'll good. get medium or whatever temperature. <laughs> so then you just put oh your little my sauce gosh. on top here. I'm so here. excited to eat this. And this is the recipe in my book, Just Cook It. And as you could see, I mean, I don't know how long we've been cooking, but it came together really, really quickly. Really fast. And while they rest, yeah. we can make our salad. Yes. Right? So why don't we do that? Like, Let's I'll get this out of your way. Thanks, here, Justin. I'm gonna show, because there's a really beautiful yeah. picture in here, because I basically just tried to copy it. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Oh, you so did there it! there is the, car the nice. three minute steaks with the carrot chimichurri. You want me to put the spoon and while <laughs> you have that book, people want to know what else. What are your other favorite recipes in the book? Um, I have. So I, I have a list. We're gonna start cooking the salad while I answer this question yeah. because we I wanted to see all this fresh produce that we got from the San Francisco farm market. I just have to say I love working with you because clearly he's a pro. He's like keeping it moving along. I'm like ready to keep it moving because you guys have things to do. <laughs> it is not a Saturday. We have places to be. <laughs> Um, so one of my f favorite recipes in the book, as a little controversial, I must say, because it uses imitation crab meat. I love this. Um, I, I love this. I'm going to find it okay. um, really quick because I have to show this to you. Yeah. But um, here crab. it is. I just saw it. K-R-A-B. Yeah. So crab spelled with a K, which is <laughs> imitation crab meat. Look how beautiful it is, though. So it's avocado. Yeah. It's citrus. Um, I happen to, one of my guilty pleasures, I tell this to anybody who asks me, yeah. is imitation crab meat. And it's, you grew up on it. I and mean, I grew up eating it. kind of it. joking that like, it's nostalgic, right? Yeah, I totally. Mean, it's what you have. Totally nostalgic. That's like what I remember cow? eating. Um, Do you like the real thing? Oh my yeah. God, I love fresh cow. I'm trying yeah. to find a place to put this because I don't want to get dirty. Uh, <laughs> let's do this you one. You want that? Yeah. Okay, great. So we're going to make a salad. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, so yeah. crab is what I grew up eating. So it's my favorite recipe. Nice. Um, so we bought a bunch of stuff at the farmer's market. Yeah. And we came up with the idea that we're going to make a savory fruit salad because a lot of people have very strong opinions on fruit salad. Yeah. Um, what did you call today? He said it out loud. You said that. I, what did I say? Fruit oh, salad is like, oh, yeah, it's, coming. it's gonna have a moment. Like it's all about fruit salad. And so, totally. forget um, the greens. Yeah, forget the greens. <laughs> They're there for color. <laughs> so we just have some really nice arugula. Nice. I happen to like adult arugula. I don't know what else to you call it. You don't like the baby arugula? I like baby arugula because of the convenience. Some. Yeah. But I, I think that real, like full grown arugula has a lot more flavor. It's much more intense, which I love. Yeah, bring, our uh, bring these over here. So make right at the fairy plaza. So this was all fresh. I just took yeah. the stems off of everything. Should Quickly. we? It's a, it's a loose arrangement. Let's let's 
tag team. Okay, okay, so why don't you start prepping the okay. strawberries and the cherries. Great. So we got really beautiful sweet cherries. Mm -hmm. They're so sweet. Um, and we're putting them in a salad. We have some really beautiful strawberries. Look how little they are. Do you just want the tops off them? Or how would you like these? Just or slice. I, I think like oh, take the tops off. Vision. It's only food, just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, shut up and just cut it. <laughs> um, Do you want to pour Yeah, let's okay, pour them. Great, let's for keep the bigger them ones. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna prep some onions here. Is your vision, Justin, that it's like things in sections or it's just all over the I top? think we're gonna do a big mix salad. Awesome, great. I love yeah, a big go. mix salad because I wanna get a bite of everything in each. Right. So we have these really beautiful, they had spring onions at the market. These are like red ones. We're um, so spoiled here, aren't we? Oh like my you, gosh, I'm so jealous. Justin's from a place not very far from here, so you come back to the bay and you realize our produce is kind of insane, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, the season is long. So one of my tricks for cutting onions yeah. is I like to separate them like this. Okay. Um, and I because then they're easier to cut lengthwise. Uh -huh. uh, like for whatever reason, I think they're really pretty this way. It's what? like a food styling trick. So it, you're getting you're getting insider info one. here. Yeah. Why have I never thought to do that, especially with these little ones? It's yeah. gorgeous. I've done it with some of the bigger, but that's beautiful. Because look at how beautiful they they end up being. Do you know what's crazy? That looks cool, but I wish everybody could smell these strawberries oh because gosh. I don't think I've ever bought strawberries that are just perfectly ripe for eating right now. Right. And these are. So I and I uh, definitely bought more than we need. And we have these really beautiful onions, and I'm going to show you another trick. Will you grab that bowl behind us with yes, the sieve? Yes, uh, um, absolutely. And just put a little water in it. See, I love you. are just teaching me tons of things today. These are all the things I do on a regular basis, I so I like to share them. Do you so, want it coming up? Uh, yeah, a little bit more okay. water. Sure. Because what we're going to do is I actually like to soak. I like to soak my fresh onion oh, if I'm using it raw, it just in a little ice water, which not only gets it really, really crispy, but it just it's takes that little bit of edge. Love this idea. Yeah, so I'm gonna add it. Is that enough water for you? Um, mm -hmm. I need a little more. You, or you can add more ice. I'm just gonna say, I'll yeah, add, add more ice, ice and we'll fill it up. And they have this really awesome crushed ice here that I'm so proud <laughs> of. Yeah. I'll even get you a glass of ice water. Look at it. If Look at this like. beautiful ice that they have. <laughs> I'm like so jealous of it. In it's our like, cafe. It's like crushed ice. It's like that chewy ice that you get at the, oh, so good. the roadside stores. Yeah. Except it's like prettier. It's like it's the pretty crushed ice. Perfectly formed. Um, so I like to do this That's and just let it soak a little bit. So we're going to let that soak while we're getting all the rest of the ingredients okay. going. Now so we, we have joking. beautiful strawberry. We have every tool in the world in this kitchen, but oh, here's the cherry pitter. So would you like these cherries yes. pitted for your salad? I so. think you definitely should pit the cherries for a salad. Oh my God. This, <laughs> this is, is, like a, the, this is the pitter that I have. Ever. Is it? Yeah. I love it. That's but the one we have in the Food Mind Test Kitchen, actually. I think we got it from Lewis and Emma, probably. Oh, I bet you did, but you could probably, you can use the back of a big knife to uh, pit your, you can press down and just pull out the pits if you prefer, mm -hmm. or if you don't. I actually have a magic tip. What is it? Magic tips in my video series for Food and Wine. And um, what I do is I take an empty wine bottle and, you just and I put on and I push it through with the chopstick. Should we show people? Do we have do we that have somewhere? A do we have? Do a we have a wine bottle? Wine bottle? You might have uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's not gonna work. No. Okay, well you can go to foodwine.com or we can link, maybe we can link to it like yeah, Justin yeah, that's Chapel. A good idea. Just Google Justin Chapel cherry pitting. And you'll find it. I love that you have a hack for this. <laughs> so these, but. It if definitely gonna, not does not do what a cherry picker does. Well, if you're going to do it for a pie, right, or something yeah. like that, this thing, you can crank through them if you've got a good yeah. little system going, right? No, so, yeah. A cherry picker is worth the investment, trust me. They're fun, too. I'm they're sorry, really this fun. is like the most fun we'll have all day. This is the like, one I have, and I like it because the um, the little cap so, on the bottom, it actually oops, prevents sorry. a lot of the splatter. Right. It's just coming directly yeah. down mm -hmm. onto me, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's better than it's okay. everywhere it's else, okay. especially well, on Well, you know what I like to do? Juice. I like to do it over a bowl, because if there is any juice, what I do that, or in, over a glass, it. I just pour a little seltzer in it. You get a little spritzer. Oh my god, it's like you were born to do your job. <laughs> born to hack. Okay, so now I'm cutting a carrot carrot orange. It's a, one of my favorite oranges. Which um, just happened to be there for you. Yeah, and the they market, grow these. Right? I asked the guy at the market where these are from, and he said they grow them in Fresno. So if Fresno's in the house, holler at us. <laughs> Hi, Fresno. Please, right, or ask us a question. How far is Fresno from here? Nah, three hours, four oh, hours. It's kind of much farther yeah, than that. Right? Oh my gosh, and that farm drives here. And that what? They drive all the way here to sell their oranges. Well. I know that. You know what? It's kind of crazy. God I realize. Yeah. Um, so this is how you supreme an orange. So you cut off all the rind like this, and it doesn't have to be perfect. No. Nope. I know people Freak want to out. make it perfect. I'm actually going to do it right over this because oh, I want the Oh, you know what? I'm going to give you space to show that because it's so important. I just want you to see. So what you do is you cut, and you don't. I'm using a big chef's knife. That's because I'm a pro. I cook every day. I feel comfortable with a really big chef's knife. Right. But I see you guys have a lot of size knives over we there. Sure you can do, do this with a paring knife if you're more comfortable. 
You could do it with, you could do it with um, a smaller chef's knife. One of the things I talk about in my book is must-have equipment. Um, and that's so important, yes. I think. I'd love to see your list and compare it to my list. Like, I always come up with the same list, even if yeah. I don't look at my last one. But this is on, I mean, good knives. Yeah, good yeah, knives. And one of the things I write about, though, is I say, don't think that you have to have one of these gigantic chef's knives. Yeah. Because just buy the knife that you're comfortable using. What's comfortable in your hand. And yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll never be comfortable using a 10-inch chef's knife, even if I'm working with food that, that's yeah. bigger, right? I just like an 8-inch or a 6-inch, because it's what is comfortable to me. Yeah, I'm going to squeeze the juice on top. Oh, that's gorgeous. And it is such a great trick, because all of that flavor that you just got Do in there. Do you want to um, put those cherries in there? I would love to. I'm going to just I would have say it. have them. Yep. Yeah. Happen. I'll let you and do that. I'm gonna do one more. Of course, I didn't want to forget it about our gorgeous cheese because oh we've got cheese and the nuts that you've been toasting. Oh yeah. This is pretty much my dream salad, Justin. It's fun. It's like we're going with the savory fruit salad. I think our our bowl was too big. I got really excited about this beautiful wing. Yeah, bowl. right. It's inspiring, but that's okay. Just like but you one said, of the other things good. I like to do for salads, mm. I like to create different shapes. So if you're doing two oranges, maybe do one as supreme. Oh, that's cool. Do one into beautiful slices like this. That's really a it's nice It's okay trick. if they fall apart. Right. I'm just going to fluff it up a little I bit. I like that. Is that enough fruit for you? I don't... Do we have more fruit that we bought? Um, well, we have more strawberries oh, we have more, more cherries. We have more... Is good. that enough? Because we're going to have the hazelnuts. We're going to yeah. have the cheese and the onion. I'm going to do a lemon really quick. Sorry. I know oh, we're going fast and we're going to run out of time. So I'm just going to do this I'm really I'm just quick. eating everything you're making. I think, I think actually... Eating raw lemon can actually be really delicious. People think that you have to only use the juice, but I actually like to kind of finely chop it like this. Just pick out the seeds. I know someone who would agree with you. Who is that? My son. He has eaten raw lemons his whole life. It's oh, hysterical. really? He would start to put little wedges in his mouth when he was little and he'd eat them. He would just dig into this right now. And I just really like funny. little supremes like this. Just pick out the seeds. Yeah. And pick them Perfect. on top and they're really good. Um, let's start crumbling some cheese. What do right. we got here? Tell so, us about the cheese. We have this Cypress Grove um, Humboldt Fog, which is one of my favorite cheeses of all it's time. So you know it as it's well. So it's from up the coast here. And it's got a layer of ash in the middle that is so delicious. It's crazy. And the ash serves a purpose. Tell us. So, <laughs> because what they do when they're aging the cheese is they first do one layer. They mm -hmm. do the first layer mm -hmm. of cheese. And what they do to prevent... This goes way back. This doesn't happen yeah, anymore. Right. But traditionally, way, way, way back when cheese making was a form of preservation, right. the cheesemongers, the cheese makers, would actually sprinkle ash all over the cheese and coat it because it prevented For, insects from so going crazy, onto it. Right. Um, and then when they had their second creaming, when they mm -hmm. had their second milking of cow, they would then put the second layer on top and then do another layer of ash on top. And it prevents the, obviously nowadays with all the rules and regulations, you don't have to right. worry about the insects, right. but the technique has been preserved. That, isn't that crazy? That's isn't so that really amazing. beautiful? But it is beautiful and the flavor is amazing too. And so how do you want to do this cheese on this I salad? I think we should you want crumble a little. Try to crumble a little. Yeah. It's really soft. It's traveled yeah, from the fairy plaza. And we've had it like hanging out on the counter here, which is actually <laughs> the best way to eat it. Right? The temp it'll taste amazing. But I mean, look at this. We have like literally a whole complete meal here. Um, we have a yes, farmer's market fruit, savory fruit salad. Gorgeous. We have a really delicious and very fast three minute steak from my book, Just Cook It. I'm going to show you it again because I'm <laughs> loving it. You should love it. You should be so proud, Justin. I'm it so takes, proud of it. We were talking about this. It takes so much work to do a book and to see it come to life after, you know, how, how long ago did you start on that book? And now here it is. Uh, I was writing it in like months? 2016 or yeah, something right? like that. I mean, so, it takes forever. It's a long process. Um, look at these oh. nuts. Get a close up of these nuts. These are hazelnuts. Show us your trick and why you put them in oil. Right. So what I like oh. to do, and we were talking about this before we went live, is one of the, my, if I were to tell the world one thing right this minute. Uh -huh. I would say you need to toast your nuts more. Yeah. Like long, you have to toast them longer because a lot of people kind of lightly toast their nuts, but if you toast them to almost to the point where they're just almost burnt like this, yeah. they get such an incredible, intense, delicious, nutty flavor. Oh. I can't even tell you. So do it. So what I did here is we bought some hazelnuts. We, we roasted them to, to skin them. Yeah. Um, and then I just toasted them in a little olive oil put a little salt and pepper on them so they're a little savory because we're going with the savory fruit salad. I love this. And I put it on top. And really quickly, if you've never, will you grab that towel with yeah. the hazelnuts or did we of get rid course. of it? No, this one? With yeah. the hazelnuts in it? Yeah, just to I'll show bring people over really a quick. Surprise. So we, if you've never had to skin hazelnuts at home, it's kind of a <laughs> hassle. So what you do is you spread them on a baking sheet, you bake them in an oven till they're, the skin start to wrinkle. And then what you do is you put them between a kitchen towel like this and you rub it. Yep. And then that's that's how you get all the skins off. And then yep. the skin the skins stay in here and then you just shake it over the sink or so the compost. Good. And we'll just fold it up. Fold it up and like put a it in the blanket. <laughs>
Oh, okay, and last thing, and then I think we're done. Yeah, a little dr drizzle of olive oil, how, too. How long have we been live? Can we... Can... 25 minutes. Oh my gosh, our oh timing. Gosh. We wanted 30, and we'll still have time but to But what I want to say minutes. is, in 25 minutes, we just did... A whole meal. A whole entire beautiful, healthy, market-inspired meal. You know what's amazing, Justin? This is exactly how I want to eat every day of my life. This like, is how I, I'm I not missing to eat. anything, yeah. right? It's just gorgeous. So we have, so just to recap, if you're yes. just tuning in, mm -hmm. my name is Justin Chappell, and Amanda has invited me Amanda into the Williamson. Amanda Haas, like the avocado. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, am I allowed to say that on air? So her last name is Haas, like the avocado, right. which happens to be one of my favorite things in the whole world. Yeah. Um, we are live in the Williams Sonoma Test Kitchen in San Francisco, California. Yes. It's been a dream of mine since I was young to come here. Oh, so amazing. And to see because I love Williams Sonoma and I love all the products and I love the culture that is created here. Oh. Um, and I finally got to cook here. Well, and, and now we you're a really part of our family. You know what I mean? I'm so happy to have you here and be celebrating you and have you back in one of our stores tonight. And yes. you guys, please, you've got to check out the book, too. But oh, my God. We didn't address it. No, we're going to put... I, I just assume we were putting yeah. olive oil on it, are we? Well, what, And then we have to taste your steak. I'm sorry. While we pick our winner, maybe we can taste your steak. Yeah, I think and we should put a little... What else do you want? Is this oh, Jacobson just, salt? It, <laughs> <laughs> Jacobson Shameless sea salt. plug, Ben Jacobson sea salt. It's so delicious. What I love about this it. salad is yeah. one of the reason, one of the things that makes it so simple and easy yeah. is you don't have to make a dressing because so, you have all the citrus, the, juice. the fruit, all of that right. is your dressing. Yeah, it's gorgeous. All of boom, boom, we're good. Okay, is it so bad if we just like slice in yeah, and I we can both try some? Should, yeah. Come on, let's see. let's both. We've got you, his and hers. Okay, I'm gonna take a kerner. John wants to know what wine would you pair with this? Oh, are you a wine lover, aficionado, drinker? After mm -hmm. after that bite, I would say mm. I took the too big of a bite. <laughs> you can say that first. I'm gonna say while we're waiting for you that the crust on it is delicious. It's and crunchy. It makes a huge difference. I'm gonna do this all the time now. Thank you. So good, yeah. So and cool. I'm really happy with it. I mean, it's one of my favorite recipes. It uh -huh. was a trick I, I developed specifically for the book. Mm. Um, I would pair probably a light red with this mm -hmm. because you have like the, you, you need something with a little higher of acidity because you have the vinegar, the, the I'm acid sorry, the, in the, in the so sauce, the chimichurri. The chimichurri. <laughs> <laughs> whatever what I work like, the orange sauce. orange stuff. green <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm just yeah, going to keep eating. Yeah, let's do it. No, it's amazing. So yeah, I would agree with you, actually. As I tasted this, there's so much acid in it that I don't think you need a bigger fuller wine, no. but something light would be fantastic. Delicious. Now, I'm going to see if anybody commented and who gets to win your book. Yeah, do we, are we going to give away a winner? Woo, <gasps> drum roll. Drum roll, let me get it so you can see what you're getting. <laughs> you're not only getting... The Lodge griddle pan, the grill lodge, pan. Yeah, which I think is new, right? Mm -hmm. it was, yes, I it think is it was new. Totally yes, new. absolutely. And what's the other new thing in the room? Oh, just cook it. Just cook it by yours truly. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let you announce who the winner is. Oh, you are? That's exciting. Are you ready, guys? <laughs> are you ready? Gals, carry justice. You're the winner. You are the winner. So fun. You're going to love the book and you're going to love the pan, too. Yes. And you're gonna cook things from the book in the pan. You're gonna post it on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what? I can't wait. And they're gonna tag you so yeah, they can see what they're cooking. So okay. I just wanna thank you for coming. What a fun time. And thank as you, you can see, I like this. So we're, I hope we're gonna sit down after this and actually enjoy yeah. the meal. But we're gonna have a big barbecue later here. At the yeah, we are show. gonna have okay. a big barbecue <laughs> here later. So thanks everybody for tuning in and joining me with Justin Chappell, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. I'm gonna try